remember, radical functions do not have x-intercepts. Okay? If you will recall, when we were graphing these things, sometimes when they would shift, they would shift off of the axis, uh, above the axis, so that it never crossed the axis. Because um, sometimes, or in this context, to find x-intercepts, what do we do? We set all of our functions equal to 0 and solve. Well, sometimes they don't equal 0. Um, so that's why they don't have x-intercepts all the time. Um, so the unfortunate thing is you'll still be able to solve the equation. You'll still be able to solve the equation and get an answer. So after you get that answer, you need to check it to make sure that the function actually does equal 0 at that point. So again, Finding the x-intercept for any function, you take that function and you set it equal to zero. It doesn't matter what type of function it is. So we set it equal to zero. Um, and we're solving for the variable, so we've got to get the radical by itself first of all. So we subtract two from both sides. Then we square it. Negative two squared is positive four and then add 2. So that says 6 should be our x-intercept. But when we put 6 back into that equation, 6 minus 2 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 2 is not 0. 2 plus 2 is 4. Um, so this is not the x-intercept. Really, if you can remember, when you're solving these, when you get to this point, if you get that the square root of something is equal to number, then um, that's what's going to tell you, um, <clears throat> that's what's going to tell you, that's uh, bringing it at 6, um, whether or not this is going to work out, okay? Because, yes, when we're solving equations, and we take the square root of something, we consider the positive and the negative of that function. But, when we're talking about a general function, we can't consider both positive and negative, or it won't pass the vertical by us. Okay, so um, that's why 6 is not actually the x intercept. There's no x intercept for this function. Sometimes we even don't have y intercepts. So let's find the y intercept. Again, it doesn't matter what function it is to find the y-intercept, you plug in 0 for x. And when we do that here, we get a negative under the square root. This one has no y-intercept either. Now, if you'll remember, when we talked about um, shifting these, these graphs, um, if you start with just a basic square root of x, its beginning point is on the origin. Whenever we've got numbers out of subtracted inside the square root, it's the opposite of what we would expect. So that minus 2 is actually going to move our function right to, so that moves it away from the y-axis. And then this plus 2 on the end is going to shift it up to, so that's moving it away from the x-axis. That's why this one has neither one of those. <coughs> Cube root functions, however, will always have x-intercepts and y-intercepts. They will always cross both those axes. There's not an issue with that, but that's also because the cube root functions have domains and ranges of all real numbers. So let's go over finding the x-intercept here. Set the function equal to 0, solve for x. Add 1. Get rid of the cube root by cubing both sides. 7x, and then divide both sides by 27. So it's a little weird, but um, 1 over 27, 0, is our x-intercept. Remember, we want to list those as points. The y-coordinate is always 0 for the x-intercept. And I do want it there in fractional form. The reason why I want it in fractional form is for two reasons. A, it's nicer and neater and more precise. B, technically you can just plug this into your y equals and use the zero 
you know, option or for the y-intercepts, you can um, uh, use the right here. <clears throat> x-intercepts x-intercept is the zero. To find the y-intercept, you do the value when x is zero. Um, I don't, my focus on this is not can you use the calculator. My focus is do you understand what it means to be an x-intercept or means to be a y-intercept. So for the y-intercept, you plug in zero for x. It does not matter what type of function. It works the same. Um, well, 27 times 0 is 0, the cube root of 0 is 0, so your y-intercept is negative 1. So we've got the point 0, negative 1 is our y-intercept. So when you're graphing these things, your x and y-intercepts need to be precise. Okay, your x and y-intercepts need to be precise. The graphing needs to be the last thing that you do.